My name is Jean Downing and I am with USAID. I'm the COR of the LEO project and I'm uh, really pleased this afternoon to be talking to Elizabeth Dunn who is a, an expert uh, under LEO and she was one of the first presenters under our brown bag series, the LEO brown bag series that we've done for BFS. And she did a presentation called Driving Innovations to Scale in Agricultural Market Systems. So Elizabeth, I wanted to ask you about the role of market systems in scaling. And if you could talk about that, and in talking about that, could you define uh, how, you're, how, you, how, you're, how are you defining scale in, in terms of market systems? Well, scaling in market systems, um, typically we think about the number of people who are reached. But there are actually other dimensions of scale that we're concerned with, including what were the benefits that those people received? What were the outcomes for them? As well as um, under LEO, we're concerned with equity and who is being reached. And finally, all of those changes aren't enough if they don't last. So sustainability is another important dimension of scale. So we're really looking at four dimensions, outreach, outcomes, equity, and sustainability. And I know something else that you talked about that was really interesting was uh, measuring scale, sort of different categories of, or uh, we, we know with scaling there are direct effects and indirect effects. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that. Well, yeah, it's taking a while, as you know, to tease out the different types of uh, uh, people who can be affected by market system facilitation. And we know that with under market systems facilitation, typically a project is working with one group of actors in order to benefit another group of actors, uh, which we call primary and secondary contacts. But that's not all in terms of who can benefit from market systems facilitation. We know that uh, demonstration is an important part and that in order to reach scale, um, facilitation projects try to elicit a large amount of imitation. So we have not only the primary and secondary contacts, but those who imitate them. And then reaching beyond that, uh, we know that firms and households will innovate and adapt the changes that have been introduced. So that's another whole area. Other firms will come in and respond. And then there are employment effects from all of that. And finally, outside of the subsector we're looking at, we can consider the multiplier in the community. So what would you say uh, is the role of market systems in scaling? I know there, are, there are, people are talking about scaling in a number of different ways, so what role in particular do market systems play? Well, the, I, I think that we're fortunate working in market systems because they provide a built-in driver for scaling, and that happens through the profit incentive. And while we know that profits are not the only thing that low-income households are concerned with, we do know that um, the invisible hand of profit seeking can, can be a driver for behavior change that we're looking for. And not only um, do market systems provide that driver for behavior change, but they also, by being systems that exist before and after an intervention, they are a natural way to ensure sustainability. So what data um, do we have on facilitating scale through market systems? Well, um, there there's, are a lot of uh, data sets out there. Unfortunately, they're not all pulled together. We did, uh, as part of this project, bring together data for 12 um, uh, value chains, and in particular, 10 donor projects, uh, representing a number of different donors. Uh, representing a number of different subsectors, but all in agriculture. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we combined um, data from monitoring systems, from impact evaluations, and also from um, separate research studies. And in order to, to determine, all right, under these different program contexts, uh, what was the outreach? Uh, what were the outcomes? And particularly looked at um, productivity, agricultural productivity, as well as household income. Mm -hmm. So how fast or slow is uh, uh, scaling through facilitating market systems? I think that anyone who's worked to implement a facilitation uh, program 
understands that scale doesn't happen right away. And so one of the things that we've been able to do is take some of this, uh, some of these data and look at outreach over time. We want to look at quite a few others, but what we've seen so far displays this typical S pattern that we talk about, where the outreach in the first two years <laughs> may be very, very small as, as um, implementers line up, their, line up their partners and begin to innovate on the business model to be more inclusive. Well, why should donors be interested in scaling through market systems if it's so slow? I mean, donors are hungry for numbers, and there's a lot of pressure to get value for money. Um, so why should donors care about this? Well, I mean, the simple answer is because it multiplies their effects so many times. Um, if you are a, a donor who is delivering services directly, um, can only reach so many people. And then once the project is over, so is the, so is the scale. And so, yes, it is true that it takes some time to begin to see the outcomes and the outreach. But on the other hand, it is a way to reach so many more people and to have the, that scale continue long after the program is over. So if I understand, uh, scaling through facilitating market systems takes time, mm -hmm. but uh, you've explained that it is sustainable. What about exponential growth? Some people have talked about that scale should uh, follow some pattern where you reach a tipping point and that uh, growth or scale becomes exponential. How does this happen within the context of market systems? And how do market systems even perhaps facilitate that? Well, you have to have a, a number of innovations to start with. You have to have good ideas, uh, good business models. And then if those are, create a win-win situation for the people who are involved, it'll be obvious. It can be obvious to the other market actors. And they're going to want to participate in that. So, um, so a tipping point can be reached when the idea is being embraced by a large number of actors who haven't even participated in the, in the project at all. And do you have examples of projects that have tried to scale uh, not through market systems and projects that have scaled through market systems? Have you seen any difference in, in that? Yes, um, we have the, we brought together data, as I mentioned, from, um, several, from several different projects. And some were more following a facilitation approach than others. And what we found is that those projects that followed a facilitation approach have been able to reach hundreds of thousands of beneficiaries. Whereas those who are primarily working directly with the target group um, reach much fewer. And then what about the sustainability? Well, the sustainability is there because, um, because people have an incentive to continue doing. You mean with the market systems with approach? With the market systems approach, right. Mm -hmm. So people, um, you know, facilitation itself, it relies on finding those drivers of change within a system mm -hmm. and, ac and accentuating those in order to, um, to, to gain wide-scale buy-in for these changes. Well, thank you very much, Elizabeth. Thank you.